We're group 11. This is Orestes Castro, Jonathan Gomez, and I'm Maribel Hernandez, and our topic is on districts on cards. Okay, so first we're going to start off with a brief history of how districts started to be used on cards, then how it works, then the current designs and applications that are being used today, uh, possible future applications, like futuristic cards such as hybrids and so forth, and then different types. We're going to talk about four different types of breaks, and finally the conclusion. So brief history on disc brakes. Originally, they were used on airplanes. In 1902 is when they were first used on cars. It was Frederick William Lanchester who first decided to apply them towards cars. There were three problems with this, with using disc brakes at this time. First of all, there was an, they were an open design, so a lot of dust and particles and water would um, stick onto the disc brake and cause it to fail and slip. Um, due to this fact, they were really, they had to be replaced very often and they were too expensive to replace. And lastly, the, um, they required too much pressure. The driver had to apply too much pressure in order to brake the vehicle. In, 19, in 1918, they came out with a uh, four-wheel hydraulic system. This reduced the pressure, but still was not significant enough to implement disc brakes. In 1950, cars started to get faster. They were heavier. The closed design that they were using of this of drum brakes was no longer an advantage. It was sort of looking not so good anymore. A few years later, the power brakes came out. This is what revolutionized uh, disc brakes. The pressure was reduced to a minimum. The driver pretty much is just a little tap and it breaks. And also by this time there was paved roads, which means not so many particles and dust, water, any of that stuff was sticking onto the the disc brakes and therefore they were they didn't have to be replaced so often, which made it less expensive. In 1956, disc brakes were standardized in certain cars and by 1970, 56% of all new cars had disc brakes. Um, racing, history and racing pretty much after they started to be used in cars, they started to implement them on four Formula One cars by 1976. The difference between the two is pretty much the material and a little bit of the shape and design. Obviously the racing cars go a lot faster, so they need to have a lot more holes to let the heat from the brakes get out. And this is a standard regular car. When pressure is applied to the pedal, hydraulic fluid is released from the master cylinder and distributed to all four wheels. Also, the power brake system uses the pressure from the engine intake stroke in combination with the hydraulic fluid to push the pads towards the disc brake that's rotating with the wheel, causing friction, creating friction, and slowing down the car. Um, there are different types of disc brakes, like mechanical brakes, pneumatic, <coughs> hydraulic, and electromagnetic disc brakes, uh, but the most commonly used disc brakes are the hydraulic brakes. And the most commonly used materials are cast iron, ceramic, titanium, steel, and aluminum. And a lot of design may vary depending on the application. Uh, basically, they have all the same components, like this is the brake disc or, or rotor, which comes in contact with the brake pads. Uh, the caliper is the housing for the brake pads and for the hydraulic fluid. And then the ventilation slot so you can have more heat dissipation uh, causing the friction. Some applications for uh, brake disc are automotive racing, you know, like you have vehicles going at high speed so you need better materials that are more heat resistant. Um, All-terrain vehicles, motorcycle vehicles, bicycles and specialty vehicles like snowmobiles and the crawler transporter which NASA uses to transport the spacecraft from the assembly building to the launch pad which you know the vehicle itself weighs like six million pounds and on top of that you have spacecraft weighing 12 million pounds so you have got, it, it's important to have very, very durable materials and heat resistant materials so you can have that breaking power you need. And then other types of applications are the roller coasters, you know, daily transportation as vehicles, 
and buses, trains, and agricultural vehicles. Next. Uh, some possible future applications for brain disk systems is uh, you know, future spacecraft that are being developed and then improved disc brakes for hybrid cars and electric cars. Some, some car manufacturers are actually implementing the disc brakes that can harvest the energy lost as heat so th they can become more efficient. So, okay, so I'm going to be talking about the four different types of disc brakes. First of all, I'm going to be starting off with the mechanical disc brake, which it was invented in the 1890s in England, but the automobile disc brake was not patented until 1902 by Frederick William Lanchester. All right? Mechanical disc brakes are very simple. It takes uh, two pads in a disc with the caliper, which is pulled by a wire attached to the pedal, which whichever pressure you put is the amount of pressure that the pads are going to be putting on the disc brake. The hydraulic disc brakes were patented in 1918 by Malcolm uh, Lockheed, but there's a reservoir for the hydraulic fluid which when you press on the pedal, the pedal puts pressure to the hydraulic fluid onto the caliper, pressing down on the brake pads onto the disc brake creating friction, thus stopping the vehicle. The pneumatic disc brakes, which are basically air disc brakes, were invented in 1869, which were first used on, on, on trains by George Westinghouse. In today's standards, buses and trucks and trailers still use this uh, pneumatic disc brake, which the engine driven compressor that fills the compressor and the foot valve, which is the pedal, the brake pedal, the amount of pressure you put on the pedal is the amount of PSI that's going to be applied on the pads, which is going to create contact on the disc brake and thus stopping the train or the bus or the trailer. Now going to the electromagnetic disc brakes, most industries use a single flux two pole brakes, right? Which it consists of line flux that attract and pull on armature, which creates torque which is applied to the pads and thus creates friction on the disc brake and stops. Usually is used on trans and electric trains. Our conceptual design, which we initiated an intake that sucks air from the ambient surroundings and blows it onto the rudder. The way this little intake works is it will be placed in, front, in the front bumper and it will suck in air through the entrance and it will exit out blowing on to the rudder, which it will keep it cleaner, keeping all the dust break off. And also it would um, keep the rudder a lot cooler from the ambient temperature. Also, it could be placed in the back fender and basically it will go around the wheel well onto as close as possible to the rudder and it will do the same function as I mentioned before. So our conclusion is if the hydraulic disc brakes are the safest, the most convenient, the most efficient, um, they're easy to maintain, um, they're very you know, cost effective, cheaper to change, any mechanic will charge you from $100 to $200 to change all four brakes, so it's the essential unit to use. And also, um, disc brakes are being used as a source of reusable energy from the heat that is dispersing, they're using it to um, re-energized like batteries in hybrid cars and electric cars and that's our conclusion.